I study casinos. If I tell you that I study casinos, what are you going to think? <laughs> oh, this lady is all day gambling. Perfect. But in the gambling, the gambling culture has come from the gentleman's club. Uh, and they have many names, casino, club, circle, in all Europe. And they have many objects that uh, they use for daily life, like those you can see. Uh, gambling machines, tables with cards, and chess, many things to play. So, if there are many things to play, what, what is this for? What, what was the real purpose of those clubs? It was not only gambling, but in my theory, and several Italian people sh share these kind of theories, uh, those clubs allow the people to have a real entrance into the 19th century liberalism and capitalism. Why? Because they allow to make politics and to make a, the new marriage between the capitalism and the nobility, the nobility. So how they can do that if they don't have a luxury places or many beautiful objects to, to surround their daily life? Well, to arrive to those objects, I have to say, that is very difficult to study it. Why? Firstly, because those clubs were private. So you were not allowed, nowadays, <coughs> you are not allowed to enter in those clubs. So you need to be introduced by another member. And sometimes they don't have <coughs> the historical way of thinking that they have to preserve their all their belongings. So they sell it, or sometimes where they recover their archives sometimes like here with the Gulbenkian project we're recovering the Circular Borense archive and even with, oh, you can go also to the public archives to find the remains of those societies but what do you find? Many lists, many names and sometimes the research that is being doing by the researchers, by historians are lists, are also copies of, of words saying, for example, this was an, the inventory, the, all the pieces they have in 1852, they record it, and historians, when they do this kind of history of sociability, of associations, sometimes they only relate, they only say what it was on the, why? Because those objects have almost disappeared, and the easiest way is to, I'm going to say, to make the history of the societies, so I'm going to say what the statutes and the rules say. So we see, when we read many books of associations, we see that they are speaking about the theoretical things, about how those societies, the gentlemen's, gentlemanry capitalism clubs, were ruled. So, and it's not true. And sometimes in those documents, they do not say anything about the object the material culture that made the daily life of those gentlemen's club. Sometimes they describe it. I've seen this very nice book. It's describing many pieces, many furniture, very luxury. Mm. And how do I see that luxury if I don't look at this photo, for example? Mm. Now, this is the, the only way to see how Sociedad Armonia Borencia society of the 19th century was it was very luxury today it's like in poverty why because they sold many things and during the revolution of portugal because i'm going to put photos especially of portugal and spain but this is a global culture of all european european clubs they have many objects that bring us to the sentimental world to the material world because they were economically they were very expensive they talk about the wealthy people the leisure class that's gentlemen who can live without working all day, they, they work, but they spend all their day in those clubs. Also, the objects of those societies speak about many things of the daily life. I've, I've all already mentioned this political way of doing, like a, uh, not the MPs when the parliamentarians went to those societies, but sometimes they speak about that and also they bring the rules the political rules and they, they adapt it to the club so they make the potations you have many things copied from the 
Freemasonry from the politics. I have said that I'm not going to mention the Freemasonry because it's very, it's to make sure a lot. Also, for example, Casino de Cali, you have the boxes to vote, they were reproducing the political way of being. And also the palaces. They are copying, a, they, they copy a palace. Why? Because they have to show the wealthy way of life of those members. And they have many objects that sometimes they have remained, but sometimes you have only the, the sculptures, or the sofas, and not many things more. But in some places, as I will show you, they have. Um, they, there are the literary resources speak that those gentlemen spend all day you know, on, the, on the club. And you can, if that was filled with objects, you could see that there is a <coughs> semiotic of the space. They know if you go nowadays to a, a club in London or in Madrid, that's like Casino de Madrid that has been kept, or like the Union Club, and you're a gentleman, you know where you are going to find the telephone, where you are going to find the restaurant, the billiards, because they have the, the semiotic of the space was the same in all clubs. They, they were reproducing the same patterns, the same ways of having the daily life. And they were served by servants. It was, in theory, a place only for men. So I've said that they, they could spend the, all the life on the day, like they, they have the hairdressing, they have sofas, very elegant places to stay, and also a sometimes a very artistic way of uh, adapting the technology. Like this, this is of the um, uh, Gremio Literario in Lisbon, and it's a magnificent box to, to call. So you can imagine that those objects were not only economical, and also they were not they were not showing the wealthy life, but also they could be related to good moments, to the affectiveness with the objects of those people who were, went sometimes to the club, which was the only place to have this wealthy way of life, because they don't have a telephone in their home to connect with the family, etc. And also uh, very good libraries. If I show you a library of, the, um, of any club of Europe, sometimes you could not difference between them. You say, oh, it's the same. Yeah, but this is in, in London, and this is in Paris, and this is in Spain. And they have also sculptures that were their symbols, like their Alexander Culano, their symbols of what they wanted to be. But they show it through these objects, in this case, a, a, a sculpture. A, also, those objects were very, very expensive, like this are telephonic auditions of opera. It was the way to bring the opera, the royal theater, to the club. What meant for the members to go there and put the audiphone? It was like, I'm, I belong to the elite. I'm the leisure class that Thorstein Beblin described. I'm the perfect gentleman. It was a shape that they were feeling when they went to those clubs. You can imagine that this is already destroyed. This is a photo of the, of the beginning of the 20th century. They have also small objects, invitations. Sometimes they are recovering now in collections like ephemera and in the British Museum, and, but it's not a normal, or this of the digital <coughs> archive. Those were the invitations, but for women, because they can also go to those clubs only during the days that they have a party, they threw a party. And they define in those tickets to be invited that a, you can come with your family because they, as far as they want to protect the family, when you give the round to this ticket, they say, we understand by family for all the people that lives in the same house. So they were describing the, the family they want to for the people to go to have, to, to spare the time all together in those beautiful palaces plenty of, of great and beautiful <coughs> um, objects. Also, we can call objects the partitures, the, the, the music Sports. they have. Sports. And sometimes historians forget about this, about the, the books uh, for, for music. And this shows us 
that it was a way, those clubs were a way to introduce European music into like, elite class European music into those clubs here we can see polka, mazurka, uh, balsa, scottis, uh, those were European music that was coming through these partitures that sometimes always I see, I've seen that they are absolutely forgotten in those clubs. They have also their hymns and also many other partitures that here is La Verbena de la Paloma that belongs to a circulo Borense and another Spanish music. Those speak about their relationship between the, the, the music of the, of the countries, different countries. And they have also the remaining architectures. This is not an object, but we have to mention it. And also, if we come back to the, the inside mm, place, we see, for example, here, only the top hat that leads you to a world of high class society. And this Leopard, those style, very wealthy people with not many style, maybe. But for example, we see this a frame nowadays is in the main room of the head of the society of the, that gentleman's club so called uh, Sociedad de Armonia Borese. It's empty. At that time, it had the photos. Now the photos are on the archive, on, on the, the mm, major archive, and now it's empty. So what's happened with those old objects? When they have remained, they have lost the functionality and their meaning. So I recommend, I, uh, my proposal is to, to recover the meaning of those objects, to look to them. For example, this is, this is a piece of theater <coughs> called El Gato Vermello, and I made a reconstruction. The, uh, this is a... We cannot hear it, but uh, the partitures. Ah, where is the micro? Ah, the partitures have been lost. Uh, the main, the main partitures. So I asked to a very good musician of Fevera to reconstruct mm. this partiture, and he made this. And we can see because of the style of music that it was like a copy of the music of Spain of the end of the century. And. They, in this kind of pieces, when we read it, we see that they use the objects of the society and also how they represent them on an ideal way. When you read the, the pieces of theater that they made, you see that they were like perfect, the perfect mm -hmm. relations with the servants. It was all an ideal world made in those societies. Thank you very much. <laughs> if we have time, I will put more and they represent themselves in, in themselves into the inside the societies but also outside when they have a party on the on the country or whatever they bring their flags all the societies they have the here I put a bottom you know they have been lost they have only one in that in this other society they only have one but only they have uniforms to be dressed for the special day and they have lost many things, and I'm f almost finishing. They were represented, representing themselves with those objects for the daily life, for the gambling. This is, this is a photo of the 1950s, and they only have this to keep the, um, the, the, the heads and the, um, the walking sticks. It's the only thing they have in, in that society of that photo. We see they have lost many objects. Why? Because when they thought it, it was not on fashion anymore, they, they sell it to the members. So through these members, they, they went there. It was a betting. They, they say, I bet you, a betting uh, auction. And the one pay the more, bring the objects to the house. So we can see a symbolical way of bringing the club to the daily life of the members. It was the representation of theater, as I have mentioned. For example, they introduced their own objects. For example, you can see a box, a security box there. And that is the real security box of that, that society. And they have kept it because keep it because it's very expensive. And they represent 
into the daily life, but also into the death. In many societies of Ebra, they bought a, a thumb for the members, the, the ones who cannot buy by themselves, <coughs> a, a place to die. And now this is the, um, the last um, image, is to say that a material culture is very important. Sometimes uh, the re refuge, the place for the, the comfortable place for the historians have been the archives, when those archives exist, but mainly the rules of the societies, of the gentleman, gentlemanry, capitalism, clubs, and this reconstructs a world that is not real. The real world, the daily life, we can reconstruct it, it building those um, objects and how it was the, yeah, the gentlemanly capitalism way of life with, for example, an harmonia, just to finish, uh, we have also some busts, some uh, sculptures. This is the same sculpture as we have seen in the other club. The other club is like the top of Lisbon. And we can see the same in Evora. <coughs> and sometimes we can see, and in another, they have the Shakespeare's, as also they have in London. So sometimes we see that the sculptures, the objects, were the same, but made by locals, sometimes. And do you think I have come here to I have made such a lot of kilometers, this fly, from Portugal just to tell you my story. No, a part of my, for me, telling you all of this, is I would like you to have, if some of you have this um, knowledge of objects of your grandma or your father, oh, they, if you have some information, please, I want you to share it with me. Thank you very much.